Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the foundation of peace. My name is Reena Rupani, and I'm part of the Sharon team. And I would like to uh, thank you all for attending today's session. Peace is really something that is uh, natural to us. And somewhere down the line, we have kind of missed it out. And Sharon is all about reconnecting to nature. That's the acronym of Sharon sanctuary for health and reconnection to animals and nature. And we strongly believe that peace and health go hand in hand. Today our talk is on the two very important foundations of peace, diet and spirituality. And that's why our speakers are going, are experts on these subjects. And it's a combination which truly works. I know it has worked in my life after changing my diet and embracing spirituality, I've actually seen a big difference. And there are days, whole days where I don't get stressed, where earlier that was not possible at all. So we just need to work at it and reconnect back to our original nature of peace. I'd like to, um, before I welcome our speakers for the day, I'd like to uh, introduce you to our co-hosts who also have experienced this peace after changing their diet. I would like to call Shashi first, Shashi Rungta, who is actually changed her diet for her husband. And when you do something for somebody else, you benefit from the same. Come pop and say hi to everybody and tell us, how did you embrace peace by embracing a lifestyle and a change of lifestyle and a change of diet? Hi, everybody. Thank you, Rena, for introducing me. I started this lifestyle because of my husband's health, as Rana said. But I benefited tremendously. Like, I was very, very hyper, was lacking in confidence. But this diet helped me to be calm and gaining in confidence also. I found the spirituality and inner peace in this diet. Thank you. You. Uh, thank you, Shashi, for sharing that. Um, you found your confidence and you found your inner peace. That's exactly what we invite our uh, second co-host, Smita Dedia, who's part of the Sharon team. And she also uh, changed her diet for her husband, mm -hmm. actually. And uh, she also gained a lot. And she'll just share with you in a minute what was it that she changed or she experienced after changing her diet and embracing spirituality. Thank you, Rena. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am born and brought up in a Jain family. Jainism uh, is uh, based on the foundation of uh, Ahimsa, not to kill or not to hurt the feelings of uh, any living being on this planet. So plant-based diet uh, in another way helped me out uh, to reach this goal to a full extent. So with this uh, plant-based diet and uh, spirituality, uh, I have become very calm, energetic, and uh, could work more with uh, less uh, energy. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Smita. Thank you. So you actually discovered changing your diet. Isn't it amazing? That's the power of this foundation of peace. And uh, without much ado, let's go to our speakers today. So I'd like to introduce both of them. Dr. Nandita Shah is the founder of Sharon, and she strongly uh, recommends going on the whole food plant-based diet. She's the author of a book called Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days, which is a bestseller. And she's also the recipient of the Nari Shakti Puruskar, which is the highest civilian award for women in our country. And um, she is somebody who has taught us how what we eat also affects how we think and how we feel. And uh, I'm gonna ask her to take this over. And along with her is a very special soul. Uh, actually, all souls are special, but a very special being who is spreading the message of rising in peace and being conscious of your very present. So it's the combination of both these which will enable us to reach to our true state, which is peace. So over to you, doctor, and over to you, Nitya Shanti. Thank you. 
Thank you, Raina. Thank you, Raina. And thank you, Nitya, for being here. It's really wonderful always to connect with you. So, uh, yes, there are two things that we're going to talk about. Peace on your plate and peace in your mind. And there's no one I know better than Nitya to talk about the state of mind because he's always at peace. And, uh, and he spread joy to so, so many people. So it's always a privilege to be with Nitya. Uh, I want to say a little bit about myself that when I... Um, well, when I found out about dairy, because I was always vegetarian, and I was so happy to be vegetarian. I grew up in Canada where everyone was eating meat. And yet I was really happy to be vegetarian because I knew it wasn't taking a life. And I thought that I was peaceful, but I used to wake up every morning with anxiety. Some people would call it stress. And when I started the day, it was fine, but I know that I used to wake up with this every single day. And then uh, I found out about dairy and I found out that in order to consume milk, a calf has to be taken away from its mother. And if it's a male calf, it often dies. And this was such a shock to me that it forced me to make changes in my diet. So I didn't really make it at that time because of health. It was only after that that I found out what a huge impact uh, changing your lifestyle and diet to a whole plant-based diet makes to health. But one of the first things I realized, it took me some time to realize this, is that that anxiety in the morning when waking up was gone. And now I even know that if I by mistake consume animal products, I wake up with that sensation again. I wasn't just a sensation in the, I mean, it wasn't just a state of mind. It was a real sensation that I could feel in my body, like a knot in my stomach. And it's a, it's a sensation I know of stress. And uh, I really recognize that, you know, when we don't have peace on our plate, when we are eating the energy of, fear and violence and um, just um, oppression, then we also feel the same and we feel like a victim and we can make a change just by changing our diet. Now, Nitya, I want to introduce you a little bit more to him. He is, I mean, one of the reasons he's here is because he always has peace on his plate. And so that's really something great about him. Uh, but he's going to talk from another aspect as well. Nitya has his own website and he does talks all over the world. And he's just come back from doing uh, an event for 70 CEOs from all over the world in, um, in the Maldives. So yeah, Nitya, over to you. All right. Thank you. Nandita, you've been... Uh, one of the people who made me a firm vegan. I was already a, a vegan when I before I met you, but I was a flexible vegan. And uh, then I realized that actually I have to fully live my values. I can't just say, oh, people have cooked it, so let's eat it. So thank you for that. And also you have tremendously clear thinking when it comes to health and nutrition. And not just that, but also the linkages of that to the environment and the larger ecosystem. So I really uh, admire you and respect you for your life purpose and your work and how you've kept it simple. You've not complicated your life too much. You focus on your mission and you keep going. <laughs> so that's great. So um, my name is Nitya Shanti. So that's quite a bombastic name. <laughs> Nitya means unchanging and Shanti means peace. And the point here is that there is a kind of peace which is, oh, no one's bothering you and you're in a very peaceful place and uh, your phone isn't ringing and uh, you've paid off all your debts and the neighbor is not playing loud music. And yeah, we will experience that piece uh, maybe a few minutes in the day. <laughs> but there's a deeper piece, which is, uh, which is called peaceful for no reason. And I think that's, that's the real invitation here that as we go through our life, we get in touch with a deeper dimension. Like when you're watching a movie, most of the time we're engrossed in the movie. But once in a while, it may be a few glimpses during the entire two hours. 
when we remember hey it's just a movie it's just a movie so in those moments we are not hypnotized anymore by the movie because normally we are hypnotized and we have what's called mirror neurons so if i start smiling and laughing then after a while you may start smiling and laughing as well that's mirror neurons and if i get really sad and if i tell you a sad story chances are you will also feel a little bit sad because we are social creatures right so you're walking down the street and you see like i saw the other day uh, a father scolding his son very sharply on the road and that affects you you know when you see someone screaming and shouting at a little child right so we are mirror neurons right so i can see that very strong exchange going on and that feels a certain way in the same way when someone helps uh, the other person nowadays these videos go viral someone unexpectedly helps somebody or somebody goes out of their way to stop and help them then that kind of video immediately goes viral because it creates a creates a good feeling inside of us so mirror neurons we get affected by what we see and what we hear so just like in the movie once in a while you wake up and say oh it's just a movie it's just a movie so the invitation is to realize that in a movie theater you have light and you have sound if you have a fancy movie theater you may even have some vibration on your seat but basically sight and sound and once in a while some vibrations but now if you extend that movie screen and take it all around and take it above and below and you also add to it smell and taste and touch and a commentary a running commentary which seems to come from inside you have life so one of the thing that i've learned if you want to discover true peace the foundation of peace like we're calling this talk is to recognize what is it like to be awake within the movie what if it is what is it like to see the movie as a movie and not to be so hypnotized by whatever is coming up in the eyes in the ears smell taste touch not to be so hypnotized even by our own thinking there's a beautiful word for this metacognition the ability to have a thought and not be hypnotized by it not believe your own thinking this is actually true skepticism not believing your own thinking so we're going to be exploring this today and uh, want to share with you a few things so when nandita says i'm someone who's always peaceful so in that sense all of us are always peaceful but then at the surface level doesn't mean i'm always peaceful i can also get bugged i can also get irritated but the good thing is i recognize that that is not all of who i am that's just a tiny part of who i am right and so it's not about putting out an art a, a kind of a Uh, artificial persona of always being peaceful no matter what you do I'll be fine that's not true one can get upset but one doesn't get hypnotized by it one doesn't get so caught up in it as one used to right and one is more fluid through all of these states so back over to you nandita what would you like to discuss next well you know i think that in this time because it's a little unusual time for a lot of people because uh, people are not at peace just because things are changing the things are not the way they used to be and there are many repercussions of this like for example your kids are at home for months on end not going to school and you have to teach them or sit with them on that you know they don't have a chance to meet their friends or anything or that you're working from home as well and you have to um juggle lots of things including cleaning the house and cooking and looking after kids and and sometimes there's domestic disagreements and even domestic violence and we're kind of stuck because there's no way out you know in a sense because we all have to be more or less at home because of the pandemic and obviously someone whose children are at home cannot go out many of us don't have help and all that so um you know it's a time when people are maybe more restless than usual and for me actually i'm very very grateful for this time because it's brought a sense of i would say external peace you know like outside things are more quiet it's not so busy not so stressful and um, and it's forcing us to actually go within a little bit more but as, as a, you know i live alone and so things can be easier for me than for other people where so many things are changing at the same time but whenever i think about this i i realize that we are all sharing this planet with 
so many other living creatures and actually right now what's happening in my life is that you know whenever i go to pondi i'm seeing all these new pet shops being open with pets being kept one on top of each other like the cages of chickens in a truck and and if you go near it it smells they're screaming and they're really stressed and one of the reasons that people are resorting to pets is it's a new plaything for their kids you know because those pet shops are doing brisk business uh pet shops which were never there before and it really makes me think about you know how we are all on the planet together and and what you know our co-host said this morning that they started doing something because of someone else and they got the benefit and honestly i left milk because i couldn't bear the thought that calves were taken away from their mothers and i got the benefit and i wish that we could all see how you know what we are going through right now in these 6 or 7 months is very very similar to what these animals go through their entire lives and this energy is coming back to us you know in the form of pets they they are you know babies taken away from their mother and put in cages and you can see them i stopped and took photographs because i wanted to do something about it and i'm still trying to do something about it and stuff uh there's also just near on the way to my office there's someone who had three calves two are male and one is a female and they've been tied up just outside his house and um and you know unfortunately i or fortunately i live in a village and i see this all the time but i see the male calves die of starvation so every day after lunch i'm feeding these three calves and it's so amazing to feed these calves because like they just see my bike on the road far away from them and they all get up with expectation and excitement and and they're so cute i can't tell you and and so i really think that it's so important that we reconnect with the reality of the rest of the world in order to get peace as well because you know when when others are not at peace how can it ever be that we are at peace like a lot of the things you know i often liken everything that's happening to a continual holocaust and sometimes it's really hard and painful to keep seeing this all the time but i'm so happy that my eyes are open and i can see it and i can do whatever i can about it and that brings me a lot of peace so yeah nitya over to you yeah, it's like you're saying you know none of us can help everyone but everyone can help someone and i may not be able to fix every everybody and everything but whatever is in my local universe whatever like you you can you're seeing those pet shops you're seeing those cards you're doing what you can within your capacity and that's that's all that's asked from us wherever we go there we are and you know your capacity to reach out and help also comes from a certain to a certain extent you're sorted yourself if you were inwardly very tense and caught up in your own problem you would not have that bandwidth so this is how i see our work is complementary because to the extent i have sorted myself out and doesn't mean i've fully sorted myself out i may still have my kinks my 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 little kinks here and there but to the extent i've done that i can be a support to others in this world and i have the bandwidth to even come for a call like this and not be caught up in my own worries and fears and anxieties right so the buddha said at the deep viharata at the sarana na anya sarana dhamma deep viharata dhamma sarana na anya sarana so make an island of yourself make an island of the truth this is the refuge there is no other no other refuge so making an island of oneself are we taking yeah there is you're right so you know we are locked down and the family were at home and everything and we can be a victim of the circumstance or we can you know there's nothing in this world that does is not an opportunity there's also an opportunity here there's an opportunity to finally get our yoga yoga practice going there's an opportunity to finally read the books you haven't read there's an opportunity to finally spend quality time with the kids and the rest of the family there are many opportunities as well because this universe is universal polarities you never get darkness without light you never get light without darkness it always goes together every problem comes with the potential 
So like you're saying, lockdown has happened and pet shops are making brisk brisk business. Somebody's business has gone down, someone's business has come up. This is the way of this world. It'll always be like that, right? And within that, we use those polarities. They're the nice teaching by Rumi. Rumi says, how will your mirror ever be polished if you complain with every rub? <laughs> so deep down, we want our mirror to be polished. Deep down, you know, somewhere along the way, we said, I want to be the best version of myself possible. You may have said that decades ago, but somewhere you said it. I want to be the best version of myself mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. I want to be the best version of myself possible. And then you ask that. And so life said, fantastic, let's do it. And if you want to polish something, it requires some rubbing. <laughs> and now the rubbing has begun. And the rubbing begins. And you say, oh, no, no, please, please stop, stop. What is this? What is this? One of my favorite quotes is, we pray to God to change the situation. Not knowing the situation was given to change us. And we're always looking to change the situation, change the situation. But we don't want to change. We don't want to change our thinking. We don't want to change our habits. We don't want to change anything. It's like this guy goes to the temple and he's, you know, he screams and he says, I've been coming for 30 years asking for the lottery to win the lottery. God, what is the 30 years? Not even once you let me win the lottery. I've lo I'm losing faith in you. And he heard for the first time in his life, he hears God speak back to him and says, my son, at least buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, <laughs> we don't want to do anything and we want everything to come to us. That's not the way it works. So whatever we do know, you know, the problem is in today's world, it's not a lack of information. Sometimes I hesitate to have calls like this, actually, because this is a world of information overload. I mean, there is just so much information on your Instagram, there's information on Facebook, there's information on WhatsApp, there's information. And there's an endless flow of information. And often I tell people, you know, people ask me, what will be the takeaway from your program? I said, I don't want to give you any takeaways. How many more takeaways do you want? Your whole life is full of takeaways, takeaways. When are you ever going to digest what you've taken away? right? So perhaps what we need is not more information. It is now integration. The, books you, the book you now need to read is the book of your own life. Reflect on your own life. You know, in the Buddha's time, people would come and take a, they'd listen to his talk, they'd talk to him, they'd, they'd ask their questions, and they'd be given a teaching. So for example, the teaching could be practice loving kindness meditation. This is one of the Brahma Viharas. There are four Brahma Viharas. Maitri, Karuna, Mudita and Upeksha. It goes very well with the theme that we're discussing today. Maitri is a sense of friendship towards all. All are my friends. I've got no enemies. This is called Maitri. Karuna is compassion. So what you experience, Nandita, with those, with those calves and with the, with the shops, the, the pet shops, that's Karuna. Karuna is compassion. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. And not just I feel it, I want to do something about it. And the ability to really feel and also want to take action and support the other person without getting thrown off. Not that now you can't sleep at night and you get, get you know, nightmares. No, that's, get, that's going too far. That's getting sentimental. But compassion is founded on wisdom, right? So there is uh, Maitri, there is Karuna, there is Mudita. Mudita. Mudita is rejoicing in the happiness of others. So when you see those calves getting up in your scooter approaches, a lot of Mudita arises. Wow, they're so happy to see me. And I'm also happy to see them. And Upeksha is a balanced mind, where the mind is not thrown so up and down with the ups and downs of life. Because in our life, inevitably, there'll be pleasant things that happen, there'll be unpleasant things that happen, and there'll be neutral things that happen. Now, for an untrained mind, the pleasant things lead to craving. You want to catch on to it. You should never go away. It should never go away. It should never go away. Like, for example, you come to Sharan, and Nadita gives you, you know, one of, their, uh, one of the food classes she has, and the food is delicious. And you've just taken one bite and immediately your eyes light up and you say, what's the recipe? What's the recipe? At least enjoy that bite. You've not even finished the bite and you've gotten into the recipe. And of course, you'll get the recipe. But notice how pleasant immediately leads to craving. Oh, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want to hold on to it. So this is the first thing that keeps us blocked. The second one is aversion. The slightest discomfort. Don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. And you want to push it away, push it away, push it away. So this is aversion. And the third one is neither pleasant or unpleasant. We get bored, we get restless. So now you catch people even for one minute away from their phone, they start getting restless. What happened, what happened, what happened? You can't even see on the airport. I recently came back from all these. There's not a single person who's sitting calmly on their seat. Everyone either on a phone or a book or something. You cannot just be with yourself anymore. If you want to access inner peace, you will have to learn to be comfortable in your own skin. 
This is one of the biggest lessons you'll have to learn. So like this, practicing uh, these, taking good care of yourself first, being comfortable in your own skin. This leads to the next consequence of then having the bandwidth to support others and be there for others as well. Back and to you. you know, the whole idea of this talk came from, I mean, it was actually planned for 2nd October, which was Gandhi Jayanti. And that's because Gandhi was a person of peace, right? And as you were saying, like being comfortable in your own skin. And when you say that, immediately Gandhi comes to my mind. And that's because, you know, no matter where he was, he was happy to be in his own clothes, in his own, like he knew exactly what he was. And no matter what anybody said, he was clear and rooted in his strengths, you know, rooted in his, in himself. He was totally rooted. Can I give and, you a and examples? So, uh, just quickly, you know, there are two examples of his, exactly what you're saying, where he was asked, why do you announce beforehand where you're going to have a, like an andolan of some kind? Why do you announce beforehand? Because if you announce it beforehand, the British are waiting for us to beat us up. If you were to just go and do it, they would not be ready. And so he said to them, do you think they'll not find out if I don't announce it? They'll put spies all around me, they'll find out. So he, he would announce beforehand because he said, I'm on the path of truth. I've got nothing to hide. They can put spies all around me. They're not going to get any new information because I'm living the path of truth. This is one example of him being in his own truth. The other example is when the Viceroy invited him to have tea, he got a broken aluminum bowl. And so they're trying to serve him tea in the fine China. He said, no, give it in this bowl. Said, what is this bowl? This is the bowl that you gave me in prison. <laughs> so while he's having, he's having conversation with the Viceroy, he wants to have his tea in the bowl and say, let's not forget what we're really doing here. Yes, we can be cordial, we can be pleasant. But let's be very clear what's going on over here. You have come and you have taken over our country and you're putting us in prison, right? And so I will have your tea, but I'll have it in the same bowl that you give me tea in the prison. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you. No, that was good. And you know, the other thing about Gandhi was that he really never wanted to even consume milk. Yeah. He was a vegetarian and he was convinced by his doctors that he would die if he didn't consume some. Therefore, he consumed a bit. Goat milk. But he, yeah, goat's milk or whatever, you know, and what a, what a misconception which is spread through the whole medical science. You know, medical science itself can be violent in different ways. Uh, and just one of them is their uh, beliefs about food which are not taught. They're not taught in medicine, but these are our cultural beliefs that we continue to promote wherever we go, you know, like a mother will ask her children to consume whatever she's been consuming and uh, doctors will ask their patients to consume whatever they've been consuming. And patients don't even recognize that doctor is sick. So how will he make us well, you know? So, yeah, I mean, it's got, I mean, this whole thing is, so much mixed with conditioning that we have to really be, I mean, the pandemic is an opportunity for us to be with ourselves and to actually observe what's going on. And in a way, the pandemic, if you think about it, the whole world, the world has to save itself too. The world is also an entity. I often think of us, uh, uh, the world as a being with all of us as cells, you know, and, and now we have a kind of cancer because one particular cell is growing out of proportion to all the other cells on this planet. And what can the world do if the world is really able to heal itself? It has to produce pandemics. And even the pandemics have occurred through situations of, um, like for example, it's the, this pandemic started in the wet market and now it's spreading on mink farms, not because mink are harmful or not because any cat or dog is harmful, 
but because keeping them in close confinement in unnatural circumstances is harmful we also human beings are right now in close confinement in unnatural circumstances so we have to reconnect to nature and animals nitya over to you <laughs> no i agree with what you're saying so um let me maybe make it more practical and maybe share a few things that uh, might help uh, in realigning with our peace that's always i like to say in the heart of our heart there is peace that never departs and so maybe starting your day with gratitude instead of focusing on what's missing what's not going well in your life one of my favorite quotes of all time is i never complain about my life because someone somewhere dreams of a life just like mine so yes you can complain oh these kids you know they're all at home all the time and you know oh look at this we can't go no maids are coming and all of that and yes these are very real challenges but let's not forget that like my maid the other day she was crying because some other kid snatched her kid's phone and threw it and it broke and now it's not just the phone is broken the kid can't attend school anymore because if the kid doesn't have a phone nowadays all these kids are doing online classes so for you and me it's just a little phone okay replace the phone fix the screen but in her case her kid could lose it he already had gone one week without without studies right so and i realized oh my goodness we don't even think about these things right so the kind of challenges you and i are facing while they are real uh, it's we need to put it in perspective right and they're the blessing in everything you're complaining about they're the blessing so this shifting of our attention from what's wrong to what's present so let's do a little practice together it's a practice that a lot of people who've learned from me continue continue to do every single day we'll do it together okay so put your 10 fingers together and these are like two lotus buds and now over the next minute or two i want you to think of 10 things you're grateful for each time you think of something open one lotus petal open one lotus petal and think of it feel the feeling of that thing you're grateful for maybe you're grateful for your children maybe you're grateful for the place you live in whatever you're grateful for and like this slowly you open all the 10 lotus petals and then you bring these two lotuses to your heart and you'll sit there with closed eyes until i invite you to open your eyes all right so let's try this close your eyes smile on your face think of 10 things you're grateful for go slow no rush feel it Whenever you're done, bring your lotuses to your heart and just feel grateful. And even for a few seconds, I want you to feel like you're the luckiest person in the world. You're the favorite child of existence. and if you like you can even say it i'm so grateful i'm so thankful i am the favorite child of existence how wonderful take a deep breath and you can open your eyes you can release your hands beautiful so what a lovely practice to start our day with right start your day if you want to end your day maybe start your day on your own and end your day with your family the the family can collectively think of 10 things 10 good thing that happened in the day you know 
because if you keep focusing on what's wrong what's missing and also please if you can reduce the amount of news you consume <laughs> news will always have a fear narrative you have to understand there's a big agenda behind news they'll not give you all the good news that all the amazing there are lots of amazing organizations like sharan for example doing amazing work you would hardly ever hear about it no matter how well today's call goes it will probably not be on uh, on the uh, on the on the news tonight no matter how well it goes but if i do something crazy like if i start uh, abusing and criticizing and saying horrible things about someone or some religion it will immediately come spiritual teacher says a horrible thing that will immediately come in the news right so you have to understand news has an agenda and that is not the best way for you all you have to have an improved lens of how you're looking at the world a journalist i was recently speaking to a journalist friend of mine journalists are overworked and underpaid uh, the vast majority of people who study journalism don't get jobs they're always insecure these are the people who are writing the news right and there's tremendous pressure on them also their journalists their lives are under threat all the time because they can't tell the truth anymore because so much of political pressure on them these are the people who are giving the news why would you want your world view to be informed by such people so yes once in a while little snippet of news is fine but you should really choose high quality books here's a book that's lying next to me a wonderful teacher deepama right she lived a tremendously difficult life uh, she was an lived in burma indian family but lived in burma and her husband died when she was new, quite recently married and then she got got so sick and then from that through meditation through mindfulness completely her life turned around this is an example if you read this book even a few pages of this book every day your life will have a whole different quality this is just one example there are so many books like this so like this be careful about the nutrition not only you're giving your body but the nutrition you're giving your mind and that's coming through your eyes and your ears and all the other things that you all the other ways in which you consume information so very mindful of that if you want peace then the diet should be peaceful in all its forms diet also what you read and what you hear go ahead and very true nitya that's true and and you know once you get into this habit of uh, being grateful for everything then automatically you're happy all the time so that's something i really learned from you so i'm happy about that yeah gratitude for me gratitude was a very big shift because when i began meditating even meditation became a kind of an assignment okay now i got to be mindful i got to be present i got to meditate every day i got to be equanimous and i realized i took my serious mind even into meditation and then i realized no but something is missing over here and it's becoming too heavy we can make even spirituality heavy and most people do actually <laughs> it's really heavy and and then we start disagreeing with each other and who's right and who's wrong and we start criticizing other teachers and this and that but instead when you bring a grateful mindset it changes everything so gratitude appreciation to be thankful to focus on what's already right you know there are four ways in which you can go through life first is everything is imperfect and it's getting worse if you think like this long enough you're going to get depressed if you want a prescription for description for depression here's your prescription think of everything is imperfect i'm imperfect my family is imperfect the economy is imperfect the world is imperfect and tomorrow is going to get worse think like this long enough welcome to anxiety welcome to depression second way of looking at life is right now everything is good but what if something happens what if something happens right now you got a job right now your kids are all right right now uh, you know you have enough food in the fridge but what if something happens what if i lose my job what if my kids uh, you know fall sick what if what if what if and that water eats you up and you can't enjoy even what you have so this is how to spoil a perfectly good everything is good but you want to focus on that point one possibility something can go wrong and you're ruining your happiness there's a story about this there's a man who dies and he comes to this open space and he hears a voice say son what do you want oh i come to heaven so i'd like to have a nice uh, house house appears what else do you want i'd like to have a nice car car appears what else do you want i'd like to have a nice wife wife appears and this is going on so whatever he asks for he gets and after a few months he starts thinking okay whatever i ask for is given to me but i don't see this voice somewhere the voice is there and if it can just give it to me maybe it can take it away as well so the nigga is very afraid what if i lose my house what if i lose my wife what if i lose my car what if i lose all these belongings and that night he can't sleep and like this three nights go he can't sleep and finally he screams and said god if this is heaven i'd rather be in hell and the voice says where do you think you are my son 
<laughs> hell. This is how you create your private hell. You keep worrying about what will happen, what will happen. Instead of being grateful for what you have, you keep focusing on what if, what if, what if. You have created a private hell for yourself. And only you understand that hell. Nobody else understands that hell because you created it for yourself. The third way of looking at life is right now, everything is imperfect. One day it'll improve. So one day when we pay off our home loan, one day when the kids go to college, when they get married, when, 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 when my doggy gets potty trained, we all have some idea. When something happens, I'm going to be okay. When the lockdown gets over, when things go back to normal, when, when, when. But you keep waiting for the when and have you not spent most of your life waiting for the when? And then when it happened, then there's the next thing. When that happened, then there's the next thing, right? So this is the third one. Then the only one that really works is the fourth one. The fourth one is everything is perfect and everything is, can be joyfully improved. Everything is perfect and everything can be joyfully improved. This is the only four or the four perspectives of going through life. This is the only one that works. And this one is based on gratitude. Gratitude is seeing the lovely shloka in India. Purnamada Purnamidam. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. Purnat Purnamadachate. Purnas Purnamadaya. Purnameva Vishishate. Which means this is whole and complete. That is whole and complete. What is whole and complete comes from what is whole and complete. When you take what is whole and complete from what is whole and complete, what is left is also whole and complete. So take an example of a seed. A seed is whole and complete. You plant it and from it comes out a little sapling, which is also whole and complete. And many, many uh, you know, leaves, which are also whole and complete. And from them come out more and more and more. You have a whole tree. And then the tree starts bearing fruit. And each fruit is whole and complete. Within each fruit is the seed, which is also whole and complete. And yet you take that fruit away, it does not make the tree any less. You plant that seed, it does not make anything less. Right? So this is a deeper dimension of looking at life. This universe is also a question coming. If everything is perfect, what about the non-vegan world? Right? This world is a sandwiched world. If you look at a subatomic level, which is what humans have gone to so far, it's absolutely chaotic. All these subatomic particles flying around, flying around, flying around. Of course, there are deeper dimensions to that, which are just, just pure isness. But then there's the subatomic world, which looks totally chaotic. Then you come to the atom, which looks very peaceful. There's a nucleus and electrons peacefully spinning around it. Then you come to the cellular world, and again, it's chaotic because every time you breathe in, your immune system gets activated to save you from all these new uh, you know, particles that have come inside. So your immune system gets activated. So there's actually a Mahabharat happening at your cellular level. There's a huge war happening. Every single moment, a massive war is happening. Your immune system is constantly active, protecting you and keeping you safe. You come to the individual. I mean, I look pretty peaceful. But then you zoom out and you come to the social dynamics. And again, there's pulling and pushing happening. And people want more and want less and family conflict and this and that. And you zoom out to the planet. Again, it's very peaceful. And again, you zoom out to the galaxy and entire star systems are colli colliding. Entire, entire solar systems are colliding. This is a sandwiched universe. You will always find order and disorder coexisting at all times. So this is why I say everything is perfect. It's a perspective, right? Yes, there will always be conflict. If you're looking for a world where everything will always be okay at all times, you're not gonna find that kind of world. That's not the way this world is structured. You'll have to find a deeper dimension where everything is perfect the way it is. How will your mirror be polished if you complain with every rub? It's not always pleasant, but it's healthy, right? Exercise is not always pleasant, but it's healthy. What I'm going through sometimes is not always pleasant, but it's required for my maturity, for my growth. So the more you reflect, the more you can see this to be actually true. The most difficult parts of your life are, have given you the greatest gifts that you have right now. That is all, that's always how it goes. When the Samudra Manthan happened in the Indian mythology, then two things came out. There was Halahal Vish, which is like the most toxic poison imaginable. And there was an ambro Ambrosia which came out. So in the churning that happens, you always have two things which come out at all times. Now, are you going to focus on the poison? Are you going to drink that poison and get sick and die? Or are you going to be economist with it? Like Shiva keeps it in his throat. Neil Kant, his throat becomes blue, but his face is completely calm. He has a moon which shows calmness on his face. So yes, there will be upheavals in our life. Yes, there'll be un unwanted things happening in our life. And we keep a calm mind. We operate from the four Brahma Viharas. Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, and Upeksha. Dukhi dekh man karuna jage, aisa brahma vihar ho. Sukhi dekh man mudita jage, aisa brahma vihar. Sabke prati maitri jage, aisa brahma vihar ho. Or har sthiti mein upeksha rahe, 
ऐसा ब्रह्म विहार हो सबके मन में प्यार हो राइट सो लाइक दिस द ओनली डायमेंशन दैट वर्क्स इज द डायमेंशन ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड gratitude is a deep acceptance of the way things are and a powerful vision about how things can be we're not saying okay now this is the way it is so we will let it be the way it is no we will do something about it we are having this call aren't we so nandita is doing i mean yes she she is totally and, a- and the very first thing yeah go ahead and 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 one of the things we can easily do about it because we always say jaisa man jaisa an vaisa man right like what you put in all all senses including your mouth if you put in energy of pain and suffering in your mouth what will you have pain and suffering and disease and it's so interesting that you know when you spare animals you don't get disease that's what i learned as a doctor you know and so if we can and and this is something you know even before you can shift your mind it's so easy to shift your food and when you shift your food your mind starts shifting and everything starts shifting and all you need to do is listen to nitya shanti more and and it happens by itself you know you don't have to do much to make it happen so yeah the power of i would say nandita you have a long term vision and your long term vision like what is the sharan full form again what does it stand for sanctuary for sanctuary for health and reconnection to animals most in nature so right there i mean you you, you can know, summarize we are disconnected right now you can kind of summarize your vision in that one word sharan in fact the word sharan itself means refuge right so beautiful yes. so like this you are someone who has a long term vision and that guides you every single day of your life it gives you orientation it gives you guidance it makes you make decisions so one of the things that many of us are missing right now is missing a long term vision we're caught up in our bills to pay or my kids and this and that and if you don't have a long term vision you will always be buffeted about by these little little things when you have long term vision all of this comes into perspective so it's very important for you to find your long term vision one hint i can and give and also and also our spiritual purpose like we are too busy doing things without knowing what is our spiritual purpose you know we are all here for a reason after all we are here to learn lessons but we hear because we all have a purpose and and we get lost in other people's things and all the things that are going on beautiful i can say one of the ways of looking at purpose is i like to say it in three parts show up share your gifts and synergize so what does it mean show up show up means get present so when i'm when i'm when like for example if i'm with someone and i can notice they're a little gloomy they're a little sad i can just ignore it okay that's your problem or i can ask a question how are you doing are you seem to be having a tough day can i do something i mean you pay attention you show up wherever you go show up do what needs to be done the other day i was in the car and the lady next to me in the car next to me she threw a big plastic bag onto the road now i can get upset i say what what is this you shouldn't i can start fighting with her it's a it's a traffic light at any time it will turn so instead of getting into a big argument with her i open my door i picked up her bag and i put it into my car and you could see her whole face went red right <laughs> now that's showing up now that's instead of getting into a big conflict she'll say you know she'll say f off you deal with it that's you know that's if you to tell me what to do right instead of getting into an argument if i want a clean road then i've got to do what i can do in my capacity right so i show up and then you share your gift we all have so many gifts some of us can speak well some of us can sing well uh, some of us are very good at organizing things some of us are fantastic cooks some of us are great at you know uh, good listeners we all have gifts and we need to recognize and own our gifts one one thing that we somehow our school system we keep comparing ourselves to others oh, i'm not good enough not good enough not good enough when you want to go to a doctor do you ever google world's best doctor you just say give me the doctor close to me that's reliable <laughs> you don't want to go to the world's best doctor you don't have to be the world's best at something i don't have to be the world's best at inner peace i don't have to be a dalai lama in order to come to this call because whatever i've learned for someone it has some value right so each one of us we have to own our gifts and so i would love for you to look in the mirror every day here's another exercise to you look in the mirror you say this powerful thing just for today what if there's nothing wrong with me <laughs> look in the mirror so i would look in the mirror and say nitya just for today what if there's nothing wrong with you and i would say three times just for today what if there's nothing wrong with you because one of the most persistent virus thoughts we have 
is I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough yet. I'm not good enough. And I meet people of all calibers, people who are celebrities and people who earn a lot of money and people who are pretty famous, people who head big companies. And they still have this virus thought, not good enough parent yet, not good enough this yet, not good enough that yet, not good enough, not good enough. When will it ever be good enough? It's a thought. We have to separate story of our life from the from our life. There's life and the story of our life. Go up, share your gifts and uh, synergize. Synergize is, I don't have all the skills in the world, right? And I don't have to be good at everything in the world. So for example, there are some people who are better at organizing and there's some people who are better at delivering. There's some people who are better at managing money. There's some people who are better at envisioning. There's some people more detail oriented. So it's really important for us to not try to do every single thing in the world or you're going to become really flat, right? you got to realize what your gifts are. There's a nice word in Japanese called ikigai. What's your ikigai? So what I'm good at, let me focus more on that. And then let me give you a chance to do what you're good at. So we synergize. So we have a long-term vision, like what you're also doing in Sharon. You have a long-term vision. And then you're drawing in through your enthusiasm, through your vision, people like Raina and others who are really connected to what you're doing. And they're going to support you in different ways, right? So show up, share your gifts and synergize. I think everyone is so mesmerized by listening to both of you. And um, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine a better way of spending this one hour. Thank you so much. Uh, really, really, it was enlightening. And it's so amazing to see life in a different perspective. And we are always just looking at our own small perspective. I loved what you said, Nitya, about having a vision, about gratitude, about reading the book of our own life. And doctor, about how you spoke that this world is a being and we are all cells and it needs to heal itself. And somewhere we all have to play, each cell has to play its role. The question is, I'm vegan and yet experience anxiety. Why so? And here's what I want to say. Just like all the animals have anxiety, so do we. However, we don't need to add to it by consuming their anxiety as well. Honestly, if you are, if you follow these guidelines completely, your anxiety should become less and less. I always ask my patients how they're feeling and what is their state of mind. And most of them say that, you know, one of the biggest changes of shifting their diet, not just their um, uh, physical well-being, which always happens, but also the great shift in their state of mind. So, you know, even if you haven't got everything yet, it's going to come. And please do practice the things that Nitya suggested. It, that has changed my life so much. Nitya, you were saying something. No, it's beautiful. I was just wanting to give an assignment to people because I like giving assignments. <laughs> so the assignment is this, that you ask yourself if you would like to live a regret-free life and a remorse-free life. What would it take? Now, whatever we've done in the past, the past is done, right? There's no point thinking about the past. We've all done all kinds of things, uh, naughtiness in the past, each one of us. But now from this moment forward, would you like to live a regret-free life and a remorse-free life? And then the assignment I want to give you is you make a list of things that when you do them, you never have any remorse. You never have any regrets. What are those things when you do them? Like, for example, when I meditate, I have never once in my life regretted meditating. It may have been a difficult meditation. It may have been a painful meditation, but I've never looked back and say, Are what a waste of time. I shouldn't have done that. That's never happened to me. When I read an inspiring book, like reading Deepa Ma's book, I, in fact, the first time I read this book, I read it in one, one night. I couldn't stop reading it. I picked it up and I just, that whole night I didn't sleep. I just finished the book. I would never regret reading something from Deepa Ma, right? Uh, eating healthy food instead of eating junk food, prepackaged food, like you say, a whole foods plant-based diet, making the effort. Like today morning, I had soaked sprouts the other day. So today morning I had sprouts and then you'd be proud of me. I had sprouts and I had some fresh juice. So I have no regrets. And even 10 years later, you catch me. I'll still not have regrets about having my sprouts and my, and my, and my nice juice. So like this, you make a list of all the things that when you do them, you have zero regrets. Now, what is, what is the regret-free life? That you do more of these things and less of other things. As you start doing more of these things which cause you zero regret, zero remorse, and you start doing less of the other things that do cause you regret and remorse, like having ice cream late at night. I had it for that moment, but now I'm feeling bad. I didn't sleep very well at night, or I'm feeling very heavy and stuff now. 
So you have to ask yourself that. That's not a question I'm going to answer for you. You have to answer for yourself. And as you make that list, you will start getting confidence that yes, it is possible to live a regret-free, remorse-free life at every level, from my diet to my lifestyle to the activities I indulge in, even the work I do, the contributions I make. And this is how our long-term vision starts getting formed. That's the true foundation of inner peace. Absolutely. So beautifully explained. And you make it sound so easy. Actually, it is easy. It's, it's all in our head. So thank you. I, mean, I think now it, everybody wants to practically go and yeah, start. Doing all this. Like we yeah. said, information overload is a big disease. Yes. So let's take, uh, you know, instead of trying to gather more and more stuff, there's a lot of powerful things that Nandita shared. I shared some really powerful things as well. And just take a few of these things. You don't have to practice everything. Take, one, take the Lotus of Gratitude, for example. Take looking in the mirror and smiling at yourself because the only long-term guaranteed relationship is with yourself. <laughs> we try to please everybody and then everybody gets displeased and the one who definitely displeases us because we have spent all our life energy to please everybody else. So I have learned that I'm not here to please other people. I'm here to be true. Like you're talking about Gandhiji, be, in your, be established in your truth. Don't, don't go around trying to please people. Be true. And when you are true, people will still be pleased and people will still be displeased. But you will, at least one person is pleased and that is the inner being. And your responsibility is for your inner being to die in peace. That is your only responsibility. It doesn't matter. The whole world can be against you. You should be at peace with the way you have lived your life. From the decision of what you eat, to what you think, to what you read, to where you invest your time. Let us invest our time in the most wise and valuable way possible. So that we look back at our life with zero regrets. Beautiful. Kuchila is asking, how do you stand your ground when someone emotionally threatens you from doing what is right you know nobody can it's got to be we've got to be very clear about this people can do all kinds of things but nobody can directly influence your emotions your emotions only get influenced with your permission so they may do whatever they're up to but it requires your involvement as well right so you have to build certain skills certain resilience it's certainly a very unpleasant thing when that's happening we're not denying that how do you come into your own strength you have to ask yourself what gives me strength what are my foundations of strength is it a teacher? Is it a teaching? Is it a practice? Is it time and nature? Is it journaling? How do you come to your own foundation? So for me, some quiet time will help me. Thinking of my teachers will help me. Uh, Self-inquiry, asking who is having this experience that will help me. I have my own foundation. As I come back to my foundations, I now have a capacity, like we talked about earlier in today's session. It's a movie. This life is a movie. If I think I'm, in the, I'm an actor in the movie, then I'm I'm stuck. I'm through all of this. I have to go through all the ups and downs. But when I realize I'm the screen on which this movie is projected, then nobody can easily manipulate me anymore. Because it's like I'm the sky. You know, you throw flowers in the sky, you have a rain of flowers coming down on you. You throw cow dung in the sky, guess what rains down? <laughs> so if you're a person, you are going to get happy with the flowers and unhappy with the cow dung. But when you are like the sky, then when they throw flowers, flowers come back on them. When they throw daggers, daggers only come back on them. This is how the Buddha lived his life. Assassins would come to kill him and they'd get converted. And people would try to come and manipulate him, but nobody can manipulate him. There was one person, he was considered the top debater of his time. Everybody he would debate, he would defeat in debates. He had a very sharp laser like mine. So somebody said the Buddha is the greatest teacher. He said, oh, I'll defeat this Buddha fellow. So he goes and he sits there. He's waiting for the Buddha to say something. And then he'll twist the words and he'll confuse the Buddha. And the Buddha remains silent. So for many hours, the Buddha remains silent. So now he doesn't know what to do. How do you argue with someone who's silent? So finally, he says something. No doctrine is dear to me. No doctrine is dear to me. And the Buddha smiles and says, that doctrine is dear to you. <laughs> so then he gets very confused. Uh -huh. So see, the Buddha is like the sky, you see. So you have to become sky-like. And so for that, you have to do your work. And yes, it's unpleasant. Yes, it's difficult. So that person is one of your biggest teachers right now. And they're teaching you the next level of your evolution. If you see them as a teacher, then you will get those important lessons and you will know how to keep doing what is right. Uh, Kajal is asking what to do when you're a workaholic and now you don't have many activities to productively occupy yourself. What do you do? You know, they, they say that in the, in the East, laziness is putting out a charpai and lying down. In the West, laziness is getting too busy. <laughs> So by workaholism, workaholism is another kind of avoidance, actually. This is another way we try to avoid. Some people avoid by procrastinating and some people avoid by getting over busy. 
So again, I would say, go back to the question that I asked you, what are the activities? What are the things that you do not regret doing? Maybe it's time in nature. Maybe it's time spent calling old friends. Maybe it's writing a gratitude letter. Maybe it's rearranging your house, decluttering your house. Maybe that could be something that you have no regrets. I also like board games. One of my hobbies is a little far away right now, but I have a collection of board games because board games are a great, many of us are addicted to our devices nowadays. So a board game gets you away from your devices and you can have you, your kids and your parents together play a game very happily for one or two hours. So I'll give you a website you can order because most people are only familiar with board games like Monopoly, but board games have really moved on since then. So here's one website of board. It's spelled as B-O-R-E-D, board game company. Dot com, I think. <laughs> so it's board. So board games, this is another great way to spend time. If you're a workaholic, do th read a book, right? Uh, go order some board games, either from this, even Amazon has very good board games. And spend time with your family and friends. Do something different. Uh, develop a hobby. And you've got to start somewhere and realize that your workaholism is another form of escapism. It may look outwardly very nice form of escapism, but it's still escapism. And at the end of the day, you're left depleted. True, that's, that's absolutely a very practical uh, suggestion. I will take the last question for today. Um, Shankar is asking, when you know your adult child doing something which is going to hurt gravely his or her life and future, how to deal with it when the child's past too was miserable? You know, um, while we want the best for people, if, you know, and think about your own life, I'm sure your parents would have loved to download all their knowledge into your head and not want you to ever do anything naughty in your life. But while you did absorb certain things just because they said it, a lot of the things you have to say, no, I have to go through my own experience, right? And chances are you also did not listen to your parents, your teachers, your well-wishers, and you had to get certain lessons on your own. So this is a very difficult one, but beyond a point, you have to let go. There are three things that I like to tell parents, not only parents, teachers, all of us. Number one, accept people exactly the way they are. You may not like them, you may not agree with them, but you've got to accept them exactly the way they are. This is step one. If, you, if they're even a little bit missing here, all the other steps get compromised. Step one, meet people the way they are. Second one is see in them a higher possibility, see in them a greater potential, more than even they can see in themselves. And the third one is never, never, never give up. Anyone who can practice these three will be a transformational force as a parent, as a teacher, as a leader. To the extent you're not following these three, instead of accepting them, you're actually judging them. Instead of seeing a higher potential in them, you're more afraid of something bad will happen, something bad will happen. And instead of being peace, you know, patient and allowing them to, to grow in their own time, you're restless and you want them now, 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 you, that sense of urgency. And then you will not be, then you're just like, you know, that's their inner voice. Their inner voice, chances are, they're beating themselves up inwardly. They don't have a vision for themselves. They only see darkness for themselves inwardly. And they're impatient with themselves inwardly. So what new thing have you done, actually? You're doing the same thing that they're doing to themselves. No change can happen from the same level of consciousness. So really, when such people show up in your life, it's a chance for you to practice the best thing that you already know. My prescriptions for others, my mother, my brother, the world, was always meant for myself. And when I start applying my prescriptions on myself, everything I teach others, I realize, my goodness, it's difficult stuff. Even this lotus of gratitude, I'm drawn to pick up my phone in the morning instead of doing my lotus of gratitude. That is the temptation. I want to pick up my phone. So it's difficult to practice it, even though it sounds really great. But to the extent I can practice it, I have hope that others can also practice it. And I'm very patient with them when they're not able to do it. So I would say be in a prayerful mode. Think of the best possibility for your son or whoever it is that you're concerned about. Wish them the best, pray for them, bless them. And then whatever you want them to do, you start doing it. And you are setting a powerful example for this individual that yes, it's possible. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, gratitude is not, not enough. Uh, from all of us at Sharon, thank you so much for joining us and for enlightening us today. I'm sure everybody has taken away something meaningful from this session. Uh, even though takeaways is not what we want, but this is actually what we need in our life. These are the real takeaways. <laughs> So, and thank you, Dr. Nandita, for always being there and always inspiring us and encouraging us at every aspect of our life to get better and better because that's one way we're going to get healthier always. So thank you so much um, from Smita and from uh, Shashi and the entire Sharon team. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.